Hey everybody, welcome to the Steve Dave Double Shot Movie Review Video Series here on YouTube. I'm Steve. I'm Dave. And tonight we're uh, stepping a little bit out of our boundaries here, going outside of our usual genres. The box. To bring you a special episode here uh, of two movies that uh, we felt like we should review. It was our, our duty. Two classics. Our responsibility to the people. You. And uh, let's go ahead and kick this off with 1973's black exploitation classic, The Mac. Uh, as far as I can gather, this is the first movie from New Line Cinema. Hey, did you first hear about that movie from True Romance? It might have been Friday. It was The Mac! It was True Romance for me, I first oh. heard. Starring Max Julian and Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. Up there is a girl with her breasts is hanging out. And you ain't even bothered to look once. You just been clocking me. And I was like, man, I gotta check that out sometime. Uh, so, yeah. That was New Line's first movie? This was New Line's first movie. That was Freddy Krueger's first movie. Yeah. I oh, didn't know. Oh. I never knew that. Well, I What the fuck? They kind of stumbled along for about ten years. But, What's the uh, synopsis? Anyway, the synopsis is, Goldie gets out of prison. I don't remember what he was doing a bit for, but, uh... Hey, oh, back in, they were in a shootout with the police. They were in a shootout, him and Richard Pryor. Yeah, him and Richard Pryor. And he shot the cops, and he told Richard Pryor to get the fuck out of he there. He took the rap. Because he's going to take the rap for yeah. Richard Pryor. Yeah, he's going to take the rap. So he, took, he did a bid, and he's getting out. And uh, so now he's about about getting his shit back. Getting his shit back. Back up on the streets. Up. Getting so, up, up, up. Trying to get over. Yeah, yeah. So... Now he's uh, enter entering into the pimp gang, and uh, this movie is quite heralded, by, especially in the hip hop community. It's a big favorite. Although it has quite low production value, it's still entertaining. Most black PlayStation do, but they do. I myself, um, I watched it, and I got what it was about, but. The best thing I can come up with is the movie is a little convoluted, as in scene for scene, the story does tend to change a lot. It's uh, Max Julian's character, Goldie, his his uh, intentions and his character changes too fucking much for me. It just you can't keep up. One minute he's a dickhead, next minute he's a nice guy. Next minute he's just out to get his before you get yours. You gotta get mine to get yours. You gotta, you know, you know, you know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to go. It's just, I feel out of Black Sport, I was always more of a Rudy Raymore kind of guy. <laughs> Don't um, mind. Yeah, PD Weak Straw, all that good shit. Um, I know we're white, but still, I can watch it. Fuck off. I, I know who the hamburger pimp is. Um, I, I think it ranks pretty low. I don't like the two white cops though. I get a kind of a kick out of them, but there are a couple points in the movie where they do get a little fucking tired, and you're a little like. I don't. I don't mind um, the, the uh, unusual kind of reverse racism on Whitey. I think it's pretty funny actually. Well, no, no, well, that's not what I'm talking about. No, 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 yeah, but like I, I don't, I don't really like. Some people might get offended by it, but I'm just like whatever. <laughs> Hell, my favorite show ever is Sanford and Son, so yeah. it's all good. It's hilarious to me. But, no, uh, I just the, the I don't know. I can't explain it with the cops. It's not the whole Whitey's out to get me thing. It's just I don't know something about them. Just it. Just cheesy to me. Just it is. Yeah, it, does have, it does have. A I just feel out of all black exploitation, it's it's no Petey Wheat Straw or Dolomite or Human Tornado. It's on the same I level. Just, Superfly. Is it? Little overrated. Yeah, little yeah, overrated yeah, yeah. Little Superfly. Little, little, little overrated. <laughs> little overrated. But um, I'm glad I did finally watch it. I borrowed it from his dumbass and. Um, Richard Pryor was all right in it. Like I said, it's about the only movie I've seen Richard Pryor actually be kind of dramatic in, Man, actually be kind of serious. Um, but again, the thing is, is you can tell the writer of the story just wasn't that experienced at writing a movie because uh, his character Goldie just changes so much throughout the whole movie. The motherfucker just keeps flip flopping back and forth so much, so much that you don't know. What's going on? You know what? One minute he's like, "Yo, fuck a bitch," and then the next minute he's making love. 
what the fuck? You know what that probably was? It was probably a, uh, a, a budget thing. Like, or I just don't get it. It's just kind of like, we'll film all this and then we'll kind of cipher through and make it happen. Uh, you know, they probably took a number of arcs and just kind of felt their way through. I don't know. It was the 70s. It was black exploitation. What, what do you want from me? Yeah. People ate a lot of acid. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you want? I want porn, yeah. Yeah, we don't know nothing. But, uh, I don't know. I give, I give it three stars. This is a good movie. I own it. Uh, it's a classic. Oh, so it's right there. Big gold, big silver new line. I didn't know it was a new line. Yeah, no um, line. That was back when they were independent, though. They were. I give it one fucking star, one star. but I, I'll give it this much. If you haven't seen it, you should see it, but do like I did. I watched it on uh, just a slow Sunday morning with my coffee, woke up, popped it on, watched it. It's very 70s. Stinkily 70s. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not that it was filmed in the 70s, but they were like, hey, this is the 70s. We know it is. I mean, they made it. Yeah, it's... uh. To know. As my friend Rob's dad, uh, Barry, said. Yeah, do we introduce what two movies we're doing? It's too outdated. No, we're going to acknowledge the other one in a minute. Usually we introduce. This is the special edition. This is where we're video yeah, series. Fucking a. But you'll, you'll find But out. anyway, he gives it how many stars? Three stars. I thought you said two. Three. A one. Here's a shot. This is for you, Richard Pryor. This is for you. God rest you. Is he dead? Motherfucker died years ago, dude. You know what I didn't find out about Robert they did that com Yeah, they did that comedy central set of I'm Not Dead Yet, uh, and then he died after. I thought he was just fucked up or still he alive. No, he's, he's dead. He's dead as Dillinger. Damn. Alright, Richard Pryor. Uh, Goldie Wilson. Yeah, Goldie. Oh, Mayor Goldie. No, no, that's a different no, movie. No, Mayor Goldie Wilson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, the no, did you just wait, Mr. Carruthers? All right, we'll be right back at you with Roadhouse. Welcome back, world, to the Steve Dave Double Shot Movie Review. You know who the fuck that is. And that's Dave. That's right. All right, we're coming at you with 1989's Roadhouse. Fucking it, right. Starring the one and only Swayze dog. That's right. Patrick, Patrick Swayze. Patrick motherfucking Swayze. Dirty Dancing, The Outsiders, Red Dawn, you know. Um, first, I'll begin this with God Rest His Soul. But uh, this movie is a great movie, directed by Ra Rowdy Harrington. And um, I would say this is an exploitation movie. It's also a western. That's what it's an exploitation of. Guy rolling into town, nobody knows him. 5,000 for showing up. 500, 500 a night. night. The double deuce. I'll straighten your shit up for you. Cooler. Um, Coolers. What it is is uh, basically um, you have Dalton. Dalton. He only needs one name. Dalton. <laughs> and he's a cooler. That's not a bouncer. No. He's above bouncers. He cleans your shitty bar up. That's what Fucking up. That's how he does it. And uh, basically, he, he rolls into town, and the whole town, a total sidetrack. What's fucked up about this is it's based on a true fucking story. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Yeah, um, Bradley Wesley, the evil shithead yeah. of town who runs town, it's loosely based. It's not, uh, in real life, a cooler didn't come to town and straighten up the town. But there was a ta local town shithead, you forgot to pour the shots. And um, he comes to town, well, he ran the town and all that, and basically the town got together and killed the motherfucker's ass. Ah. And they loosely based this on him. Anyway, back to the story. Uh, Dalton comes to town, he's starting to straighten out the double deuce. Turns out Brad Westlake runs the town, mafioso style, you know, with a little, uh, you know, extortion. And a monster and, truck. Yeah, whatnot. Local shitheads tearing up cars with the monster truck. <laughs> and uh, Dalton comes in just to do his thing. He's, he's trying to straighten stuff out. Meets a doctor. Falls in love. Makes a couple friends. You got a nice appearance by the Jeff Healy band. And, uh, he was blind, but he could play. Yeah, yeah. And real band. Real, real band. musician. Things get a little hairy for him, so he has to call on his buddy, Sam Neill, to come help him Sam out. Sam Elliott. Sam Neill was in Jurassic Park. 
He's right. God damn. God damn. What the fuck? But is my I want to note also. Fuck me. Sam Elliott and Brad, what's his face, were also in the Big Lebowski together. Although they didn't. They didn't oh, Brad Wesley. Brad Wesley. Yeah, who played in the Big Lebowski. They both. Um, who played the big uh, um, publisher. Jackie Treehorn. Jackie Treehorn. Jackie Treehorn. Jackie Treehorn is Brad Westlake in this. <laughs> but um, <laughs> basically, Dalton, you know, his his life, he's he's a philosopher. Yeah. And his philosophy is pain don't hurt. And um, he does yoga, doesn't he? Also, no, he does tai chi. Tai chi, that's it. He does as he lives out of a bar. But basically, the way this movie really works is is you first. You'll watch it as a joke, you'll have a laugh, and then you'll watch it out of, out of camp. And uh, you find as you start to watch it, it comes on TNT a lot, it saves them in ratings. And um, But like Steve and myself here, you'll find one day you'll buy it. It's like, <laughs> I'm just, uh, fuck it, I'll buy it. But now, I, I like this movie. You can't really deny the rewatchability quality yeah, of this it's got, movie. Because you start out with fucking, this is shit. This is entertaining shit. This is good shit. It's funny shit. I gotta say, now it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's, it's undeniable, it's man. It's grown on me. My wife still doesn't see it. She does. It's got so much machismo. It's very macho. They don't make them like this anymore. No. Not at all. No. Dudes are way too defanged in movies Some, uh, these days. Nice Kentucky claws on the women. <laughs> Some titties. A lot of big hair. It was 89. That's what I meant by Kentucky claws. Oh, man. yeah, yeah. Some titties. I like the scene where the chick's working out. She's got the black eye and she's like, oh, don't, don't, don't look at me. Look. But look. <laughs> it's, and then he goes in there and Brad Westlake's eating his omelets. It's got self satisfied. He's like, JC Pity! Didn't come here. Tell me. It's got the guy from X in it too, right? What's yeah, it? yeah. Uh, John Doe. John X Doe from X is a bartender from the punk rock band X. Um, I don't know. It's just it's got it all, and it does have a great documentary on the making of it with interviews with the Swayze Dog himself, Rowdy Harrington. And the cool part is, is you find out none of these people took this movie for more than what it was. You find no one is like. I really had to get into this rule. I really had no. Sway's dog's like, he's got a philosophy, and fuck it if he wants to believe it, he's full of shit. I mean, they know this was just a machismo well, western. Some pretty uh, funny quotes in it, too. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. Yeah. It's great. Pain don't hurt. Pain don't hurt. We said that a minute ago, but pain don't hurt. But, uh, yeah. This is, uh, hell, I give it 5 out of 5. Don't I give it 10 out of 5. You can't even front Roadhouse. Nah, nah. You will watch it, you'll be like, oh, fuck those guys, they don't know what they're talking about, whatever. You'll get it, hooked. We started as, oh, fuck this movie, ha <laughs> ha, it's a joke. Now we both fucking own it. And, uh, they can buy for five bucks now on DVD too. You can't. You have no excuse. Yeah, you got no fucking. Don't rent it. Just buy it. Don't Netflix it. If you don't own this movie, you suck. You, you're not a man. Yeah. You're just not. It's just no. Nah, fuck you. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, wait, wait. What did he say? What are you gonna do, old man? Well, I'm sure as hell I'm not gonna show you my dick. <laughs> That's it. There you go. This is for you, Sam Neil. It, Dude, that's a name. You know, I wouldn't sell. Sam call. Elliott. It is. Why do I keep calling him Sam Neil? That's Jurassic Park. That's Sam, Mouth of Madness, Sam Neil. Yeah, I know. What the fuck, Sam Elliott? I apologize. Legendary actor, Sam yeah. Elliott. Yeah. Although he was in a shit box called Tombstone. No, Tombstone's awesome. <laughs> what about that movie he made with Peter Weller with the cop movie? Which one was that? You don't remember that. I don't think I saw that. I forgot the name. Tombstone's good. We should debate that one day. Yeah, fuck it. There's a roadhouse. Double deuce. I miss you, Sway's dog. Thanks for watching the Steve Dave Double Shot Movie Reviews. Um, special edition episode. Watch more movies. Uh,